the fourth part of mastering test taking and it is the educated guessing strategy so when you, we say take an educated guess it's not just take a guess it's a smart guess and there's ways to figure out the best way to choose an answer when you really don't know the answer it doesn't replace studying or any of the hard work that you put forth on it, you know, to prepare for a test. But there are certain strategies. What they are not, these strategies that we're going to go through today, they're not foolproof. They're not going to guarantee the right answer. And they're not a substitute for good study habits and test preparation. You still have to do all that. You want to be prepared the best that you possibly can be for any upcoming test. So educated guessing strategies cannot, they don't compete with and they don't take the place of your own preparation and your grit and your effort and your study habits. And they're not going to guarantee the correct answer. Even when I give you these strategies, they will sometimes work, but they're not, it's not a guarantee. Here's what they will do for you. They will help you when you are unsure of an answer they will help you narrow down choices. You've got four choices. You want to get it narrowed down to at least, you know, not too off and look at two possible and maybe find the right answer. Educated guessing strategies will improve your test scores. If you're just not taking a random guessing, but you're doing educated guessing strategy, you have a strategy. See, knowledge is key for everything. If you have knowledge on how to take an educated guess, you will do better because it does give a or provides a systematic way to choose the best answers. Let's look at this first example. Okay, so this is going to require you to think, <coughs> critical think we've already talked about. So let's look at frequency of occurrence, frequency of occurrence strategy. This is one strategy to use. Look for items that appear in more than one of the choices. The following languages are spoken in the Camorra Islands. Look at your answer choices. You've got Spanish and Arabic. You've got Arabic and French. German and Italian. French and English. Do you see, of those four choices, how many of you see answer choices that were mentioned more than once? Raise your hand. Okay, so frequency of occurrence, of occurrence means that it's mentioned more than once. What do you see? What do you see that's mentioned more than once? Arabic. Arabic? Arabic. French. French. Okay, you can see that in A, you've got it here, and in B, you've got it here. Okay, mentioned twice. French, you've got in B, and you've got in D. Now, if you knew nothing about the Camorra Islands, I mean, and you're truly making an educated guess, and you're going with this strategy, what would your, what do you think it might be? It is B, because they both appear twice. So look, that is one strategy. Read this question in the answer choices on your own. Are there any of these that have it mentioned more than once within the answer? I mean, were they together? Yeah. Different ones, D is what I heard mostly. D is correct. These words each appear more than once, and they're all together in D. Okay? So do you see how this strategy can work for you? So another strategy is to look at the root word. If you know any of your Latin or Greek roots, if you do, that will help you in, in giving a partial meaning, partial meaning of certain words. Look at your first example. So, a first example. You are correct. Because copper like CU equals copper. Here's another example. The unique characteristics of the nucleus is visible. See, it's the correct answer. EU means good or true. Okay. See, it's the correct answer on that one. Example three. Look at this one. It's 
still using the root or prefix clues. Look at the word symbiosis. Do you know any part of any of this word? D. They are more successful growing together than they are separately. Why is that? Because S-Y-M means together. B-I-O, bio, like in biology. Bio means life. Bios, okay? So together and life. That's what you could have concurred from looking at this word, the word parts. So growing together. This is the only one that says to grow together, right? And they are successful bios meaning life. We have prefixes. Know what these words are. You may recall some of them. <coughs> or maybe an English class previously. These are what we call negative prefixes. They come before a word and they mean a negative, like not or un, you know, so a negative. When you put D-I-S, disorganized means not organized. Logical, illogical means not logical. Turning it the opposite or not. Irresponsible, so the Prefix IR and un, unimportant. Let's look at the first example. To prevent infection, it is recommended that hospitals use. Now, you haven't taken any hospital training. So, all these questions I'm giving you, these examples, are things that you may not have studied ever before, but we're going to use educated guessing. Infection, it is recommended that hospitals use. And then look at your choices, cleaning fluids, air filters, chemical reactants, disinfectants. Do you see anything in the answer choices that can help you? D is the correct answer, dis equals not or not, okay? And for trying to get rid of infection, then you want something that doesn't infect. Is it true or false? Okay, because we have innumerable means too many to be numbered if you can mean can't, right? So can't number it. So that is true. Try this one. strategy works. This is an X substitution strategy in math. Math is not my favorite subject to work with, but here's a little strategy that could help using the X substitution. When you're doing problems, problems that you have to solve, computational type problems, when solving for X, it is sometimes, it will simplify the problem if you do a known something that you know and understand in place of the X. Choose an easy number normally to work with. So just put something, when you're solving for an unknown like X, if X is the unknown, just replace it with something that you do know. Highest and lowest numbers strategy. When you have number options, given to you, but they vary greatly. There's a big variance. Chances are that the best response is in the middle ranges. So take away your highest number choice and your lowest number choice, and you should be left with two in the middle. If we have the average number of volcanic eruptions recorded annually is, and we have these four choices, 25, 60, 100, 750. See, the 750 is your greatest. You're going to just take it away. You have 25, which is the lowest. So eliminate it, remove it. So then choose between your two in the middle, which would be 60 or 100. You may have to make some choice between those two. Again, the highest and lowest number strategy. Columbus sailed to the Americas in what century? You're going to choose between A and C. Why is that? Because they are the most similar.
similar. They're the closest to it together. So choose between those two. Who knows the answer to that one? In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Certain questions have answers that are almost the same, except for one detail. This is a clue to choose one of those two. If there's two that are very similar, look closely at just those two. A good communication technique to use when confronting someone. Now we've not had psychology in all these courses, but look at your choices. A good communication technique when, to use when confronting someone is, if you look at A, it's an I message. Number two says an I message spelled differently. Three, a sharp remark. And four is silence. Now the two that are similar, similar sounding, is one and two. So you would want to choose one of those. Here's another example. A chloroplast contains, we've got chlorine, calories, carbon, chlorophyll. You would want to choose between A and D because they contain the root chlor, as in chloroplast. Then we have the opposite choice strategy. In some cases, the best choice is between two very different. So just a second ago, we said, okay, two similar, but sometimes it's better when it's between two very different or opposite choices. The medium cognizant is A, ignorant, B, aware, C, insensitive, or D, remorseful. Here you would want to choose between ignorant and aware, because those are total opposites. Then we have an umbrella option strategy, another good one. This one you see a lot. When one option encompasses the other options, it's within the answer. For example, let's look at this one. Test anxiety can be reduced by A, because it includes all the other options. That's why we call it an umbrella. It covers them all. If you chose B, that's one type. C is one type. So we want to choose the umbrella that covers them all. This one says practicing relaxation techniques, all those. To assist a child in developing social skills, a teacher should, in this question, you know, they're all good. <coughs> but when you look at D, this is a variety of social activities. Well, A, B, and C is a type of social activity. So D covers all the other correct responses and all the others aren't correct. Then we have the complex question strategy. Seemingly difficult questions can be simple to solve when you know how. So it seems like, oh wow, this is a long, this is a hard question, it's complex. Actually, you can make it simple. And look at the answer choices. Whoa, it looks hard, but that's deceiving. As a health worker, you are serving a patient his meal. In which order should the following steps be accomplished? So they're asking you an order. One is provide eating utensils. Two, wash your hands. Three, dispose of leftovers. Four, prepare food. Five, serve food. Here's the strategy. Figure out the first step. You look, you read those, and you go, okay, what's first? Right? The first step is to, then boom, look at your answers real quickly. So once you know your first step, you're already narrowed down to two. Then what's the last step? You can figure it out. You don't have to figure out all the ones in between. What's the last step? Because they both can't be right. Is it four or three? Three. It's three. So with the two options that had the number, the two first, right? Which has three as the last? D. So D is the correct answer. I did not need a whole entire minute to solve that. I just had to figure out what's the first one. Fine. My, okay. Out of the two, I see a four and a three. Which one would be last? And I look at those two and make my decision. So make it simple. Then we have a judgment question strategy. Questions may not be difficult, but the choices are. They may all be good, valid choices. It's like, oh, all of these could be right. They, they all look right, they sound right. But you have to select the best one of the group. What if they're all true? You've got to choose the best one. 
The best answer is that one that uses common sense and that expert individuals agree to be the best answer. Let's look at the first one. Which nursing diagnosis would be most appropriate for the client who has undergone the full course of ECT? You may not know what that means. It doesn't matter. You can still figure it out. Let's see if you're right. C is correct. The C is the best answer because it has A and B in it. And D is more likely to occur before the full course of ECT. See, it said the patient, the client, has already undergone the full course. <coughs> They've already done it. So what is um, so what has happened? Well, maybe altered thought process related to the adverse effects. Adverse effects of ECT. This is an adverse effect. That's an adverse effect. Okay, and it both has to do with thought or, or memory or knowledge. So that would be a judgment question strategy, even if you did not know what any of this was. A grammatically correct strategy. If a choice does not make a, gr a grammatically correct sentence, take it out. The basic purpose of an educational grant is. So if we look at um, and finish the sentence. The basic purpose of an educational grant is you need it to supplement college costs. And let's look at four. The basic purpose of an educational grant is achieving high grades. It doesn't even fit. It doesn't make sense. Only sentence two and three actually is grammatically correct. The basic purpose of an educational grant is to help the financially needy student or to promote college success. Now out of those two, once you narrow it down, these two, three is, is wrong because a grant does not promote or guarantee or give success. The absolute strategy, if an absolute, like always, never, every, none, all, if they're there, if it's in one of the choices, consider it false. Let's look at these four choices. The dropout rate in high schools is in the increase because, what's the correct answer here? This is the only one that said some. All the others had absolute. Here's an example of a true false. A person who is experiencing anxiety always needs to take medication. They've got that absolute in there, so go with false. Without the right intentions, a student will never succeed. Again, go with false because it's got the word never in there, which is an absolute. Most people today have an opportunity to obtain a quality education. Here you're going to go with true. Why is that? The exception or most different answer strategy requires you to pick the option that does not belong with the other choices. Let's look at this example. Which of the following would be an example of cognition? Now remember, the exception, pick the one that doesn't belong or it's the most different answer. Driving a car, swimming, hiking, studying for an exam. Studying for an exam is the most different option from all the others. Here's another example. All of the following are qualities of a master student, except C is the correct answer because you don't have to buy, the master student does not have to buy the best <coughs> books and supplies to be a master student. The longer response strategy. I see this one a lot. Sometimes the correct response is longer than the others because, you know, more time from the instructor was put into developing that correct response. So, of the following, this is the most effective therapeutic method for controlling depression. They give you four choices. Before even reading them, which one looks longer? We can read them, and you should read them. But sometimes when they really put some effort into making that response, it's probably the right one. C is the correct response, and it is the longest.
Keyword strategy. Choose a response that has the same or similar word in it as the question. Oh, that's, that's, that's a beautiful one. That's a trick right there. So you're looking for something in the answers that matches something in the question. One of those key words uh, or, you know, repeats it. The loci system of memorization is generally more effective than repetition because it is A. Word loci appears in both answer and question. Here's another one. Immunosuppression means B is correct. Suppression or form of it appears in both question, right here, and answer. Creating a test that is valid or effective is in measuring what it tends to measure is known as, and then you're, all right, answer choice is D, and two strategies may be uh, used here between it. You probably knocked it down to A and D because they both showed validity. That was in the question. But you want to narrow it down to D because creating, creating implies the same thing as constructing. 